Hello everyone, welcome to Stuff Pops Explained, a channel that brings you events, activities, issues uh, from different parts of the world, uh, but our focus is mainly on what is happening in Africa. In our today's video, we'll be looking at one project that we have followed for quite some time, the Grand Ethiopian Rhinoceros Dam. This is a dam that is being constructed in uh, Ethiopia uh, along Blue, uh, Blue River Nile in a region called Benashagul Gumuz, which is uh, some 40 kilometers away from the Sudanese border. Egypt is one of the countries that has been uh, very vocal about this project, arguing that this project will, threat, uh, will threaten its existence. Uh, Egypt argues that construction of the Grand Ethiopian Rhinoceros Dam along River Nile will reduce the amount of water that uh, flows uh, downstream. It has tried uh, various means to stop this project. Uh, when the Egypt had of uh, plans to build this project, it started to lobby the uh, international community to stop or to force Ethiopia from constructing this dam. That did not succeed. Ethiopia went ahead and started building the, the dam. Uh, still, Egypt continued with the uh, effort to stop the construction. Uh, talks have been ongoing for so long, uh, but the countries have agreed on some issues, but they have not agreed on the main issues, that is, on how the dam should be filled and how the dam should be operated, especially during the drought. Uh, so in this video we are going to look at the, the Egypt's latest attempt to influence the international community to persuade or to force Ethiopia to stop this construction. Ethiopia is preparing to fill the, uh, the Grand Rhinoceros Dam or the Grand Ethiopian Rhinoceros Dam for the fourth time. It has done so since 2020. Uh, the second filling was 2021 and the third feeling was in 2022. So this year, Egypt will be, so Ethiopia will be filling the dam for the fourth time. So it, it normally does so during the uh, long rains, which are between July and September. So in the last three years, the dam has been filled to some capacity. And uh, according to the officials, the dam is almost uh, one third full. One of the issues that Egypt has raised is the speed at which the dam should be filled. Ethiopia is for a long, is for a shorter period. Egypt and Sudan are calling for the uh, an elongated period so that uh, the water flow downstream is not affected. So Egypt has been looking for uh, partners. Uh, to try and persuade Ethiopia to stop this dam. The latest attempt is uh, from the fellow Arab nations uh, where it, uh, in, in the Arab League of Nations conference it, uh, it talked to the member countries to persuade Ethiopia to accept a legally binding deal on filling the, uh, the operation of this dam. So in this video we'll be looking at what Egypt has been trying to do, especially during the latest attempt, uh, what was the response of the Arab, Arab League of Nations, and what was the reaction of Ethiopia to this uh, to this attempt. So for more than a decade, Ethiopia has been building the guard along the Blue Nile. With the construction and feeding of this dam, Egypt fears that its vital share of the river's water will be significantly reduced. Egypt receives more than 90% of its scarce fresh water from the Nile and uh, fears that the dam could uh, worsen or devastate its economy. According to the Egyptian Foreign Affairs Minister, uh, Shukri, the continuation of Ethiopian unilateral practices to build and fill the dam, the action, uh, he says, can potentially, can potentially carry a grave danger for Egypt which suffers from a unique water scarcity and because of it, uh, it, 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 it entirely depends on the uh, river now. So any attempt to draw water from river Nile, uh, Egypt says, 
is an existential threat to the country. Over the years, Egypt has tried various means with the initial duration to try to stop the river from building, building the dam. And in the latest years, it has been trying it to stop, I mean, it has been trying to stop uh, the country from feeding and operationalizing the dam. The latest move has been through the Arab League of Nations. This was the first time that Egypt publicly called on the fellow Arab nations to help it persuade Ethiopia to work towards a solution of their decade-long dispute over the dam. That in turn reflected the Cairo's conviction that several Arab nations have uh, leverage over the Ethiopian government because of their vast investment in the Horn of African nation. Uh, while addressing an Arab League of Meeting in Cairo, the Egyptian Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri said he wanted fellow Arab countries to force Ethiopia to stop its or what is what he called unilateral and uncooperative practices and embrace the necessary political will to accept one of the compromise solutions that has been offered in the negotiation table. These solutions, the minister added, can fully help Ethiopia realize its economic interests without hurting the fate of downstream uh, countries. Ethiopia says that construction of this dam is a is key to its economic development and power generation. Although Sudan at some point accepted the construction of the dam, the country is concerned about the dam's safety and regulating water flows through its own dams and water stations. As a result, there has been a bitter dispute between the countries over the filling and the operation of the dam, and this has remained largely unresolved. And that's why Egypt is saying that Ethiopia is making a unilateral decision, especially especially in the feeding of the dam and also uh, operationalizing of the dam. Ethiopia wants the dam to be filled within a relatively short period of time. Uh, actually, Ethiopia wanted to fill the dam within three years. Egypt wanted to be filled with uh, over a prolonged period, 15 years. Uh, so they have not reached that compromise. And that's why uh, this conflict has continued. So due to that uh, tussle, in July 2020, Ethiopia announced that it was to start filling the dam. And uh, this is what uh, Egypt is calling a unilateral decision. Because Egypt says that no agreement has been reached between the three countries. Although some negotiations had been going through uh, through the tripartite uh, uh, negotiations, uh, the parties, especially Ethiopia, uh, Egypt and Sudan, says that no concrete, no concrete agreement has been drawn, especially on how the dam is going to be filled and operated. So this move, those what they are calling the natural decision to fill the dam, did not go well with Egypt and Sudan. So uh, talks started. The three countries sta resumed their talks in 2020 August. Uh, in a process that was mediated by the African Union. And uh, in September 2020, they signed a document that was prepared in 2015, the Declaration of Principles. And this is what outlined the process on how they are going, how they are supposed to negotiate. So this Declaration of Principles has 10 points. One of them is that it outlines a process for filling and operating the dam. And with this, Egypt argues that uh, well, when the Ethiopia comes to this, they are supposed to agree on how this should be done, especially duration uh, and uh, the mode through which the dam should be filled. So, however, the negotiations have been slow and contentious, with the countries disagreeing on various issues related to dams, operations, and distribution of water resources. So, Ethiopia feels that this process has been so long and they want to start production of electricity. Actually, uh, the process of uh, producing hydroelectric power started in 2022 and Ethiopia want to use this dam to provide electricity to its citizens. Ethiopia is regarded as a power deficient country so it want to fill some part of the, that gap to provide electricity to its citizens and also use it to power uh, its manufacturing sector. So with negotiations going slowly and the opposition from the two countries, Ethiopia feels that it's being dragged 
DUP has also argued that filling of the dam has been a natural process. Uh, it has been done during the long rain season. So Ethiopia argues that uh, there is, I mean, you cannot negotiate, negotiate a, a natural process. So when the rain are heavy in the highlands, the dam will definitely uh, fail. So Egypt has been using every opportunity to influence the international community to force Ethiopia to stop building and feeding the dam. This has not yielded fruit as the country has continued with the process even to an extent where it has started generating power uh, in February 22. In the Arab League of Nations conference, uh, Shukri, the foreign minister of Egypt, highlighted Ethiopia's continued process of building and feeding the dam without reaching a binding legal agreement with the two downstream countries. He stressed Egypt relies on its Arab brothers to force Ethiopia to abandon its unilateral and cooperative practice and to show the necessary political will to adopt uh, any of the compromise solutions that were proposed at the negotiating table and that proved to be fully uh, Ethiopia is not co cooperating as according to uh, Shukri. Shukri was the chairman of the session and he announced that the decision to put guard on a permanent as a permanent item on the agenda of the Arab League uh, of Nations. While addressing the press conference alongside the, alongside the minister, the Arab Secretary General uh, Ahmed Gate concurred with uh, what the minister of uh, Egypt was saying, and he said that the decision confirmed the commitment to protecting the rights of the two downstream countries, that is Sudan and Egypt, who, which are members of this uh, League of Nations in the Arab region. He added that Egypt has been raising the issue of God with Arab uh, League of Nations for years. It was raised in a consultative meeting and the uh, Arab position was issued in its four years, I mean four years ago. But it, it said that it's important to note that there is an Arab decision supporting water rights for Egypt and uh, Sudan. So Arab uh, League of Nations seems to agree with what Ethiopia is saying, and uh, BC, given that Ethiopia is a member of that uh, uh, league, uh, it seems that as, uh, as per the words of the Secretary General, uh, they agree with what Egypt is saying, and uh, they're supposed to take uh, a concerted action. Ethiopia has reacted to this, and uh, the government said that it was not satisfied with that resolution of the Arab League regarding the feeding and operation of the guard. The Ethiopian foreign minister said that Ethiopia is dissatisfied with that resolution that was made on March 9th regarding the feeding of the dam, and added that the management and use of the Nile River, including the feeding and operation of the dam, should be left to the concerned parties in Africa, the Nile Basin Initiative countries, which are 11. Uh, he said that we should not have to remind the League of uh, uh, the League that the Nile River and its riparian countries are found in Africa. That seems to be a very strong statement. So Ethiopia here is dismissing that uh, resolution and says that uh, waters of River Nile should be managed by the countries which are concerned. And uh, as far as Ethiopia is concerned, uh, the League of Arab Nations is not a party to that. It's not a member of League of, I mean, Nile Basin Initiative. Uh, the minister added that the League is once again serving as the spokesperson of one state, disregarding the principles of international law. The minister added that such attempts to politicize the issue of God neither advances friendly relations nor supports the effort to arrive at amicable solutions as they are not based on the facts or supported by the law. Uh, the minister said that God is an issue, is an African issue that needs an African solution, stressing that the African Union is facilitating the tripartite negotiations between the Ethiopia, between Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt, and uh, they are trying to resolve the outstanding issues in good faith and uh, in settlement. I mean, and the settlement in the spirit where they want to find the African solution to the African problem. This, that's again a very strong statement. Uh, which, where Ethiopia is calling for 
uh, Arab League of Nations not to interfere, not to support one country uh, without following the facts and the law. The, uh, the minister considered, continued to say that the fact that Egypt, with its uh, stance to maintain a colonial era based self claimed water collocation and its uh, unending attempts to bring this matter to, to the focus, uh, Ethiopia is calling to stop into this. Uh, is when he talks of a colonial era based self claimed water allocation, he's referring to the treaties which were signed uh, during the colonial period in 1929 and 1919, uh, where Egypt was allocated all the uh, river Nile waters, and downstream upstream countries are not supposed to use that water. So Ethiopia, through building the dam without what Egypt is calling uh, in, uh, through unilateral decisions, was uh, is against these treaties because these treaties were signed by foreign powers and uh, countries in the upstream, especially the Nile Basin Initiative countries, were not involved in these uh, in these talks. So this is uh, this, this is something that is will continue and will be keeping tabs on to see what is happening uh, with Ethiopia preparing to fill the dam for the fourth time. Uh, we'll keep tabs to see what uh, will prevail as far as this conflict is concerned. So thank you for watching this video. Leave a comment and tell us, tell us your thoughts about this project and the conflict and whether this conflict can escalate and lead to a war between the two countries. So if you have reached this far, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Also watch other videos that you have done on this project and other projects in different parts of Africa.